are, um, you may have heard some like crazy rumors about Guy Kai and Sony coming into the show. It, it, it got a little crazy. We're getting tons and tons of press, but the, the thing was that that wasn't our announcement. Our announcement was that we're, we, uh, we've done a deal with Samsung. And so Ethan back here is from Samsung and he's brought some of his colleagues from Samsung. Um, but so they'll be able to answer any questions um, directly. But I'll explain the whole process um, as we go along. When we started, we, uh, we asked 20,000 gamers um, what influences you most to make the decision to buy a game. It was like probably the most important question for a publisher, right? And the answer is game demos. So, you know, we just want to play the game. And um, the, the twist is that most of the money spent today is down here and the stuff that like TV commercials and things like that. And so, whatever way you ask this question, this is this is from a different company. They said, where do gamers want advertising money spent? And the number one choice was again game demos. Number two, in-store game demos. And so the gamers are pretty clear. We just want to play. So knowing this, the companies must make it really easy to try their games, right? And the answer is no. And I, just as an example, I use World of Warcraft. It's an enormously big title. But it's amazing when you see the process you have to go through just to check it out. Like your friends are all talking about it, you hear about it. And I wanted to see what is this world of Warcraft. And, and, and you enter into this world of, um, of pain. So here I have a legal agreement. And then you've got, you've got to fill out the form and passwords get a bit picky. And they just, they, this is normal as you know for most games. And so I like to just, I, I show World of Warcraft because it's such a big hit and I asked this legal agreement number two. I asked uh, the World of Warcraft team why why is this so difficult? And the response was, actually this is the new version. This is much better than it used to be before. But there's, there's things in there you can see like um, well we have to we have to install the, the downloader. So and then we have a play button that you can't click. Big gray play button. It's an awful tease for a gamer, right? They're like, let's go, let's go. Um, it has, actually hasn't started downloading yet, um, so we're, there, there we go, 9 gigabytes, and then it's going to take 40 minutes on the clock, and then the play button lights up, and then we get legal agreement uh, number 3, and you have to scroll all the way through it, and then we're going to give you legal agreement number 4, and you have to scroll all the way through that, and then you have to log in because it's forgotten who you were. And, uh, and so this is kind of the process that we, uh, that the game industry really commonly puts gamers through. And the friction guarantees that you're going to lose some customers. And the point is that gamers came here for entertainment. These are people that, that bore really easily, right? So these are the people that, you, you know, they came for entertainment and we end up giving them something kind of monotonous to go and do. So 34% um, of them, nearly 35, will end up just typing in garbage just to get through the forms as fast as they possibly can. And then 31% will just literally bounce. So they'll just skip the project right or the product right away because they see there's going to be pain involved. And so this is unacceptable. And it's always based on movement of data. So like just to move a small amount of data, like one gigabyte, is actually a kind of a pain on the internet. And um, and on um, on games like Star Wars, we've now hit 28 gigabytes. And, and games, just to be clear, are going to keep getting bigger. And it's going to keep en enlarging the size of these files. So it got much um, larger. And so the only way to really solve this, to make it instant, is to not move the data around. So, so that would be to run the games from the cloud. But to do that, we had to build a new kind of infrastructure. And Intel and Qualcomm invested into our company. And NVIDIA is working very closely with us. If you look on the corridor outside and between the two halls, NVIDIA is demonstrating cloud gaming you know, with some of their new stuff. Um, and then um, this is uh, this is basically our map of, of how we're building out our data centers. You see these white flags? So we now have the fastest interactive network in the world, and it's live in 88 countries. So th the question then is, for something like World of Warcraft, what would it be like if you could just remove all the friction? Meaning, I just find out about this game, my friends keep talking about it, and I just want to see it. Here, here it is on the iPad. You just do one finger to look around, second finger to run, and the third finger to jump. And then, and now you're in. You're like, that's it. Now I can jump in and actually play the product. And so here we're translating everything in real time and sending it back to the server so we can take any kind of inputs. But it's completely playable. This is the full game plus three expansion packs. So this would have been normally an enormous amount of installing and waiting and delay and friction to get to this point. 
And so this is the way um, we think people would rather interact and, and get at the games quickly. Um, so I saw this picture in um, Popular Mechanics magazine, and I, I thought, my goodness, the chainsaw business is completely screwed. I mean, they're literally at this point just copying each other. It's just they've given up trying to design anything new. They're all getting to look exactly the same. And um, I kind of thought, I hope this never happens to the video game business. And then coming out of E3 last year, I heard the press were saying that as they were taking or getting given lots of screenshots for um, for first-person shooters, they were starting to find them harder to, to spot the difference between them. So as more and more and more get made, it's going to actually get harder and harder. And so for you to find the best first-person shooter for you as an individual, today it's actually really painful to go and try a lot of these games. It takes a lot of effort. So wouldn't it be cool if you, you like this one? It looks pretty cool and I could just click a button and jump right in and check it out. And that's basically what cloud gaming will allow. Um, and all genres have the same problem now. So every genre is flooded as the, as the genres mature. And so the ability to just jump in and say, hey, that FIFA soccer looks pretty good in play would be cool. So gamers just want a quick taste. They're very clear, I just want to try it out. And, um, and yet today, we make them plan their day around the movement of the data. So when they get home, we say to them, you know, start to download now, then go have your dinner, and then come back later, and then you can play the game. Or if it's on a console, here, download five games now, go to bed, and then tomorrow, you'll have, those games will be ready for you to play. And, and so they end up planning around all this movement of data. So one thing that we haven't really explained is we've been working on a second technology. We have two, we have cloud gaming, but we also have cloud delivery. Cloud delivery is to try to help solve that problem. And, um, and the way it works is that we have, on our, on our website, we have a page where you can click a button to start a download. And instead of actually installing a downloader like, like a Steam or something like that on your computer, it actually just opens a web page and starts installing it from the web page directly into your hard drive. But it's not doing it in a here's, a, here's a file, now you have to run it and go next, next, next through all these different screens. It's actually installing the product fully ready to go with all the patches and everything else. Um, seamlessly. Um, and that's what's kind of cool about it. So this is now the fastest, slowest friction downloader in the industry. I'll show you if I go over here. I'll try to skip forward. Just to, yeah, my mouse can go all up there. I'm going to skip forward just to let you see what that's like. So later in the process, you can have the developers talking about the game. Like when you play, get ready to do this, that, and the other. And then in a few seconds, this is click one here, click two. And it launches the game running locally. And that's it. So it's now the lowest friction, fastest possible way you can get games running um, on your machine. And there's a there's Dragon Age running locally. So this is called non-linear, asynchronous, progressive crowdsourced proximity accelerated file delivery, or uh, NALA for short. Uh, but that's one technology. The other one is cloud gaming, which is uh, which means play now. And that means you can play games like Crisis 2 in your office. So on a computer at your office, it's not so cool. You can literally just have amazing graphics, even if you don't have a 3D card on the machine, because it's all being rendered in the cloud and delivered directly to your device. So cloud gaming is under a minute to get to play something like Crisis 2. Cloud delivery is around five minutes, and traditional downloads is 40 minutes plus to be able to get to play. Um, and so the game companies tend to look at the internet as there's people out there, and if only I could get those people to come to my website, then I can convert them on my website and get them to, to buy the game. And I'm going to pay someone to move traffic on the internet to get them to come to my website. And as game companies go digital, this is going to determine whether they live or die as they go digital. It's how efficiently can you buy people and get them to come and play your games. And this, and if this is hard to get the game going, it's going to cost more and more money as you keep getting more people. So this is going to determine whether or not um, the, the publishers are able to survive as things go digitally. So what, we, what our proposal is, is to stop that process and instead take your game and put it across all the websites that are out there. So everyone that, where the people are playing games or talking about games, just put the game right there. If you do an article, Crisis 3 shipped this morning, put a link with it and let them play it. And that stops having to move people around. Um, so the concept is very simple, move the, move the games to the gamer um, and um, instead of moving the, the, the gamers around. 
So what's our overall strategy is could, we have this question on our website, could the best video games become as instantly accessible as movies and music? Every time I see a new device like a, like a Samsung Smart TV, when I see Netflix icons and Pandora icons and Spotify's and all this stuff, and then there's no video game. Like where's the, where's the FIFA Soccer's and where's the Call of Duty's? They're just not present. That's, that's something that really bugs me, so that's something that we've been working very hard at trying to change. Um, so that's really what we're going to be doing, is trying to get the very best games onto all of these different devices. And we use automatic time demos to do that, because then all the games in history become available, because we can just give you a taste of them, and then if you like it, you can continue playing. So progress-wise, we've signed Walmart. The only way to place a, 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 you know, a big video game on walmart.com is through us. And uh, you'll see we have our own area in, in uh, Game Center. Um, the same with Best Buy. The only way to place games on bestbuy.com is through us. And, um, and EA were the first publisher that we signed with. And they, you can see us built into EA.com and uh, part of the origin strategy. And then Ubisoft is now building us into the Ubisoft. And overall, we have um, nearly 40 publishers signed up now. So there's literally just a few more publishers to sign and we're done. They're all at some stage of integrating Gaikai. Um, so YouTube was one that we went after. We wanted to, to we basically said, can we not show a video of the game and instead actually let you play the game in YouTube? That would be really cool. And so we did it with FIFA Soccer. And the average play time was crazy compared to a video. A video is normally averaging 15 seconds of engagement on YouTube. And, um, and, and for the same click, we were getting 12 minutes. And so it's so engaging compared to a normal video. It's, it's crazy. So platform-wise, um, um, Apple and Facebook, when they launched, they didn't take things very seriously. Um, games were kind of like an afterthought, but if you, if you were to talk to Apple or Facebook today, they're going to tell you that, that games are very important to them. And so that's our message really to the companies like Samsung is don't take two years to work that out like they did. Um, you know, you know, trust me, in two years from now, you would work out what games are really important. So just go straight to, to having um, good games. And um, also, removing friction is important. So make it easy to get into the games. This is what um, Apple did. So that there were games on phones before Apple showed up, but it just wasn't that easy. They got a billion downloads in nine months because they made gaming and um, installing applications much, much easier. And this isn't just a US anomaly that games are, are important um, across all the categories. It's actually, uh, they're number one in every territory in the world. So um, another question I ask is, for the, the Samsung to this world is, how much money does Microsoft make when people play games on your TVs? And the answer is billions. And so then you go, well, from, from all that money that, that they made, how much money did you guys make because they played it on your TVs? And the answer is nothing. And so the point is, why should they get to have all the fun? And this is important because um, video games are responsible for the biggest entertainment launch in history. So games like Call of Duty, $400 million in 24 hours. This, it's like, this is an important industry, and yet all of these companies are, are not participating. So all the, the TV companies, set-top box companies, all the TiVos, the Blu-ray makers, all of these companies just don't participate or help the games business. And, um, and so our point is, isn't that the space you're in, like monetizing entertainment? Isn't that what you do? And, and yet you're not participating in the biggest entertainment launch in history. And we know the next one, it'll either be the next Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. And so if you want to participate, you're going to have to, um, currently you're going to have to do it through cloud gaming. So if you decide to do that, the message is don't start with lame games. Like don't, if you put like, throw the Frisbee as the game, and it doesn't sell, that's not the game industry's fault. That's, that's, a, that's a lame game. Um, put FIFA Soccer on your TVs, put Call of Duty, put the games that are going to make money. And so start with the best games. And that's basically what Samsung is going to do. So this is a very important announcement because in the next 12 months, all the consoles are going to reset. You're going to have the next generations come out. And Samsung is sweeping in at that, at that exact time um, right now with state-of-the-art games on their TVs, and they are the largest consumer electronics company in the world. And so to have the biggest consumer electronics company in the world entering the game space right at this vulnerable moment is very cool, because it means they become first party. So you will have Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Samsung going forward. 
Do Mike, do you want us to give some quick demo and you'll we'll see it? The twist is also that this isn't us doing some kind of hand wavy, someday TVs will run games. It already works. So this is this is running on a on a, a sense of TV. But we've been working with it for months on, on the engineering side of it on both ends. So the twist is we were gonna launch it at E3 2013, but we're actually gonna be launching um, the beta within the next 30 days. So we're gonna be inviting people to, to literally icons will appear on their Samsung TVs and they'll be able to sign up for the beta. For the people we select, we're gonna send them free controllers in the mail, so they're gonna get um, wireless controllers mailed to them. We're gonna collect their feedback and survey them, and if they're happy, then we're gonna unlock it for everybody. And, um, and so the point is this is now, and there's no, notice there's no console required, it's just the TVs do this. And, and the other crazy part is there's no cost added to the TV to make this happen. So there's no new chips, there's no new special motherboards or something inside. Um, this is this has been done through um, all sort of very, very careful new software um, trickery um, in the TVs and, uh, and it's, it's able to do this. So another thing that we thought would be neat would be to start to try to flip the table. So it's been unfair, movies are everywhere on every tablet, every everything everywhere and games aren't. But how about we flip it so we start putting our games everywhere but also put them into places that are kind of hard for movies. Like watching Avatar and Facebook isn't that easy but but we can put the games there. So that's what we've done. You know, you can now come to our, our uh, Facebook page and, and start clicking on games. There's Dead Rising 2. And we don't even bother explaining anymore how this works. We literally, the gamers just click and Dead Rising 2 appears and it, it makes, for someone technical, they go, how is this, what is going on? This is impossible. But in reality, um, it allows us to drop in any game in there, and you can resize the screen so it will fit any monitor size, so you can play on any device, and you can also play full screen. So you haven't left Facebook, but and we're the only company that can stream directly into the web page, so it's literally injected right into, into your Facebook page, so it feels like it's actually running on Facebook. Um, and you can see here Mark Zuckerberg going, this is gonna make me so rich, joking I'm already rich. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so model is um, disruptive because we actually don't we don't try to take any money from the um, like any of the, the percentage of the revenue or their customers or we don't take away any of their future sales or their data. We're more like Amazon. We just charge for the network. So we we, we built this network and so we just charge for the time they use on it. And, that, and that's how that works. So digital um, publishers are really where this industry is headed. As we go digital, it's, it's amazing how many publishers still, when you try to buy digitally from them, they tell you to go buy it somewhere else. And we keep saying to them, you've got to stop this because as we go digital, you have to own your digital customers. You have to have relationships with them. You know, you, you've got to build a lot of them as quickly as you can so you can be a viable digital publisher going forward. And so that's something that cloud gaming will also help them with how to do. We collect a lot of data and we present that to the publishers so they can understand exactly what's going on with each of the games that they're running. And, um, and to answer the question how we're going to pay for all this, because I kept getting asked, how are you going to pay for all these servers? Like, this is this is going to get real expensive. The answer is that, that the partners are buying the capacity they need. So. You know, if any company comes along to us and says, I want a certain amount of capacity, they're scaling the network for themselves. We've already built enough network for us, but as people like Samsung come along, they're actually buying dedicated capacity for themselves. And that's why if they add more devices, they have to buy more capacity and, this, and the, the entire cloud grows. Um, and by doing that, they also get to use uh, their own payment solutions, etc., etc. So where is it going in the future? Is um, I believe the uh, the surprise is going to be as we start to add more video cards per player. Um, it's going to start to get to a point where the the cloud version just looks better than, than running it any other way, and so. That's something I think will be a, 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 an interesting moment in time as someone goes, huh, there's two different, I can play it in the cloud and it looks like that, or I can play it locally and it doesn't look as good. I, I think that's gonna be really interesting. Um, and also, uh, 4G is now rolling out really fast, and you can play in 4G, so if any of you has 4G, you should try that at an airport or something. It's pretty fun to play the latest games using, uh, using your 4G. And then tablets are our next thing. So we've been waiting for tablets to hit 60 frames a second, 
and um, and we just got there. So now tablets are running all the games we have, 60 frames a second, and you're going to see this rolling out. Um, uh, with the first deal that we've signed is with a company called Wikipad. Uh, Wikipad is making the first um, um, the first actual gamer tablet, and it comes with a controller. So it's a tablet, but with a controller, and the screen is stereo 3D, and Gaikai is built into it. So effectively, you can play on the go in, in uh, stereo 3D, and it looks it looks absolutely stunning. Again, at 60 frames a second, it's really cool. So that you're going to see that. Anyway, back to the question: uh, Could the best video games become as instantly accessible as movies and music? Um, I there is really I can't think of any other way to solve um, these problems other than cloud gaming, and that's why we're doing exactly this. And, um, so cloud gaming really is the only answer, and that's it. So are there any questions at all? Uh, hopefully that makes a bit more sense what we're up to. Yes. I might have missed this because I came in late. Yep. But how many titles are available on Gaikai? So we have. Um, you said 40 publishers. I think yeah, I think we have about 100 titles now that on our network, but we haven't released them all. It'd be people like Samsung will pick through them and say these are the ones we want. Um, but we have different games spread across different sites. I think I'm not sure how many are on our site. It's probably 20 or 30 right now. Our side, we have about 40. 40. There you go. So. Um, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I want to be really clear. We don't choose the titles that they're going to display on their TV. So they literally will look through the, the, the catalog and decide which ones. But the, I think the big twist is that they're they're Samsung. They're the biggest consumer electronics company in the world. If they go into a publisher and they say, we want to get behind this title, I think they can get any title they want. So I think that's the other thing. Would Samsung have to broker that through yeah. the publishers themselves? Yep. So we, we to, to be clear, oops, sorry. What we do is we um, we don't actually do that. So we don't um, we don't um, negotiate their their deal because again we are with the platform. On the other hand, we do bring them the games to get them going. So it's not like we're leaving them to do everything. But if they want to work on specific titles, they're more than welcome to. We'd love them to. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so say that again, sorry, I missed the first part. Um, if, Sam, if Samsung says we want um, Dark Side 2, yes. is that now a Samsung exclusive? No, 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 it can be, we can, we still have it on our website and things like that. I mean, they could potentially for digital TVs, the publishers might do that deal, but they would, it would be a big deal directly with them. So, uh, but uh, but no, I would. It, publishers generally only only do exclusives for very particular things. So you'd still see it across the web and Facebook and everywhere else. Um, any other questions? One thing is to make sure that, that you know that the two that we're supporting are the ES seven thousand route. Those are what you see up there. And you'll notice a little bump on the top of each TV. That's our that's the camera that's included in these TVs. So there's a camera and microphone in there. We're using it for gesture control and other things, but the games can also support that as well. Yeah. So that's a nice thing. Yeah, so every time Samsung adds a cool new feature to, the, to their TVs, hands, motions, or whatever, uh, we will add it to our SDK so that developers can get at it. And that's, that will just be an ongoing. They're constantly adding, uh, like voice control is a great example. Um, so yeah, we'll just keep adding those into our SDKs. It makes sense. So the, the, it just adds more tools for the developers. I think that's where gaming is going to some extent, where the first thing games are going to do in the future is go, what am I running on? Um, because they're going to be running across lots of different devices, and they're going to say, oh, this one's got a camera, this one's got a touchpad, and the games will, will literally modify themselves in real time to handle it. That, it's so much easier for a developer to do that than to build entirely new versions for every single separate uh, product that's out there, which is, is what, you, what you see a lot of today. I did have a quick question for you. I know we're just wrapping up, but can, is Gaikai to the level now where your typical consumer grade Ethernet can run games like Darksiders 2 as well as what we just saw here? I mean, yeah. is this Superman Internet no, you have in here? No, no, basically, you need. It's a great question. We I, we like five to six megabits. Okay. Um, and, um, 
We used to insist on it, and the publishers were asking us to drop the, the restriction. But it, if you're down lower than that, it's going to say to you, this is not optimal as far as the, the connection goes. Like, say you're down at one megabit, mm -hmm. it'll say, this is, this is not an optimal connection. Yeah. Would you like to continue? And then it'll be your opt-in. Like, you will opt-in to say, sure, OK, I still want to experience the game. So that was something the publishers wanted. But we, um, you know, we're the opposite. We want the highest quality. So I think we're going to meet in the middle, quite frankly. I think we're going to end up around two or three megabits. Sure. Uh, and, and I'm sure, I don't know if you've got that, but two or three megabits is pretty common now. Yeah, I've got uh, internet faster. Than yeah, but, um, but once you get up to, you know, five, six, uh, when you get to stereoscopic, it takes even more, but, you know, the quality just becomes beautiful at that point. So, what you said about video cards versus cloud gaming and how at a certain point it's going to go more cloud, do you think companies like NVIDIA are going to be, it's going to force their hand basically to get stuff in the cloud? I mean, stop Good. making GTX 900 millions? And yeah, no, they're working very hard right now. Uh, I just spoke at their conference that they just, the CEO was on stage just saying cloud, 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 cloud. So they're very clearly way after this. Sure. And not just games, but desktops too. Just, you know, the concept of, of having, um, you know, super convenient access to everything from the cloud rendered by their hardware is yeah. it's really where it's all going. And they're investing very aggressively into it. Interesting. It's hard for me to swallow, to be honest, because I'm a PC gamer and I love my, I think a lot of people love the tactile nature of building up totally. something. And this kind of, while it's cool, it kind of takes that away. Well, so a there's a piece for um, there's a piece for everyone, um, in meaning that for you, what, what would attract you is you know there's a bunch of games com coming out, or you know it's a Saturday morning and you go on Steam and there's a bunch of games, and if they incorporated this technology, you could just go, I want to check out that one, I want to check out that one, I want to check out that one, I like it, buy it, right? right. That that would actually be a good use of cloud gaming for you, but sure. for for other people who've got a lame computer, like you probably have a gaming rig, yeah. the people who don't, this is the best news ever. And we get emails all the time. Oh my God, this is so amazing because my laptop sucks, and now you've made my gaming good. So it's it's. Sure. I think each individual has their own something to gain from it. For you, I think it would just be, you know, I'm just checking stuff out. Do you guys think you'll ever move beyond just demos and do full 100%? Oh, yeah. oh definitely. Samsung is, is full games. Yeah. So so the code is written now to do. We had a slightly different approach because we didn't want to have to modify the games to get saves to work. Mm -hmm. So it turned out a lot harder than it sounds, but we now can do save games for all games. Um, and, and, um, and that technology is, is that's super cool, right? Because it means the onboarding speed is so fast, and um, and then um, and it means we can open up the library and have historical stuff too, yeah. and have that saved to the cloud to your account with seamlessly. You don't even need to know. You just don't sure. need to know. It just works, right? And that's that's been an enormous engineering effort to get that.